Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another Specialized Library Spotlight. My name is Dan Bostrom. I'm the Rails Member Engagement Manager and uh, I'm here today with uh, Rita Hassert from the uh, Sterling Morton Library. Uh, Rita is the Library Collections Manager. Uh, Rita, welcome. Would you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, thanks so much. I welcome this opportunity. Um, I'm a gardener and I'm a librarian. And as you can imagine, this is like the perfect place to be in the Sterling Morton Library at the Morton Arboretum. That's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, this and this is also a wonderful time of year for gardeners. Uh, so uh, that's great. Um, OK, so, so tell us a little bit about your library. Uh, who are your users and specifically what, what services do you provide uh, for the for those users? So to give you a little background, I always like to describe what are the library's origin story, just like a superhero. Um, so actually, we predate the library collections at the Arboretum, predate the founding of the Arboretum. So Joy Morton, a very successful industrialist and, um, you know, the founder of Morton Salt, um, was not only interested in salt, he was also very interested in trees. So in 1922, he created the Morton Arboretum. As you can tell, doing math in my head, we're 100 years old this year, which is really incredible. But the collection, Joy Morton, in addition to wanting to plant trees, he also wanted people to learn about trees. So he started a library at the very beginning. It wasn't until 1963 that the Sterling Morton Library opened, and we've been open since with our collections all together. So we're open to all. Anyone can actually come in and use the collections. Um, we do allow Arboretum staff volunteers and members to borrow things but we also actively participate in interlibrary loans so if just because you don't fall into one of those magic categories you can still access information from our collections um, we have like a typical academic or public library we have a circulating collection we have reference collection we do provide interlibrary loan through swan so we are a swan library um, and then also through OCLC, and we have special collections, the Suzette Morton Davidson special collections. And so within that is our archival collection, which is um, numbers hundreds of linear feet, a rare book collection of about 5,000 volumes, and a collection of artwork that includes um, original pen and ink drawings, watercolors, all the way to prints, and that number is about 16,000 pieces of artwork. So it's a really diverse collection, primarily focused on botany and horticulture, as you can imagine. Um, I always like to say to people, we have a very deep collection. We're unlike a public library, an academic library, we collect relatively narrow topics. But within that, we have children's books on trees, we have general gardening guides, and then we have highly scientific papers and research. That's really cool. And, and especially cool for the other libraries that are part of Swan and, and uh, in borrowing materials from you, uh, it, to have that depth of a collection of uh, specific topics is really quite amazing. Um, all right, thank you. Okay, so what is one service or resource in your library that you're particularly proud of? Okay, I'm proud of it all. Let's get that out of the way right <laughs> away. Right? But I would say um, we've developed something over the past seven years called ACORN, and that's a collections management system. So um, I should have a card, but anyway, it's acorn.mortonarb.org. Um, it's based on open source, open source software collective access. And what it's allowed us to do is bring, you know, I mentioned about archival collections and special collections, bring all those um, different collections together in one platform to search. So it allows um, someone to search, for example, like search the word oak, and you can find within ACORN, you might find a drawing of an oak tree, you might find a highly scientific paper on oaks, you could find a photograph of an oak tree, you could find a poem about oaks, it's bringing everything together. Um, I like to say it's kind of like Lord of the Rings about the, the ring, but no one loses any fingers at the end. So I'm happy to say that we, we have all our digits. But, but ACORN has really allowed us to increase access and discoverability of collections. So right now, we have about 84,000 objects described. So that, again, that could be a video, it could be a photograph, it could be artwork. And then we have over 40,000 digital files associated with them. Not everything is digitized, but things that have been digitized, they are available. And, and the beautiful thing about it is it you can be in Idaho in your pajamas and you can search it. You don't have to be on site. Um, so it's really increased visibility. Um, and 
you know, the example story I like to tell is this happened within the past year. A gentleman emailed us. He said, um, you seem to have a letter my father wrote. And so I looked it up. His father was a minister in Wisconsin. He had exchanged some letters um, to a landscape architect named Jens Jensen. We have Jens Jensen's papers in our collection. So he exchanged the letter. The son, who the son who was an older gentleman, just Googled his dad's name. And so he came up with and he discovered these letters. And so we they weren't digitized. They were like seven or eight letters, scanned them, sent them to him and his sister. And he had no idea that his father had talked to Jensen about landscaping around the church. He was trying to develop a landscape plan for the church. And so I love that those barriers are broken. And that's one of the great things about ACORN. It's allowing people, it's lowering the threshold. It's allowing people, the community to have access to information or resources they might not even knew never ever existed. So it's really a great resource. And I think, you know, and, and it's staff and volunteers have contributed in so many ways. So we're all so proud of it. That's such a cool, that's such a cool story. Such a great way to illustrate how powerful libraries are. Uh, and and uh, the, the ACORN, we will link, we'll provide a link in the description of this video uh, to, to your ACORN platform so people can check it out on their own. Um, but that but that's such a wonderful resource for people. And um, and it really, it can uh, allow people to go really deep on uh, on this topic. So, um, okay, you, you've kind of already addressed it a little bit, but, um, but I'm, I'm interested in your answer in this last one. In your opinion, Opinion, why are specialized libraries like yours important and, and what makes them relevant for their users? You know, and I would say now more than ever, right? Because information and knowledge is packed in packaged in so many different formats. It can be, you know, like when you go to Mariano's, they want to know if you want paper or plastic. We got it all, right? We have paper, we have I could right now reach for a book that was published in 1481, and then we have contemporary videos. And so how do we navigate? But we're also capturing it. And as I like to say to people, we want the seven generations ahead to have access to it. It's not just that we want to use it for today. We do want to use and access it, but we want to make sure the future has access to this, these, this knowledge and information. So I think special libraries, I mean, I'm, I'm so, you know, I said I was proud of ACORN. I'm so proud of the library communities and all that we do in so many different ways, whether it's a school library, academic, public, special, I feel like we're, we're this kind of giant puzzle and we're, we're an important piece. We can provide a lot of um, very specific, very unique information, whether it's on the founding of the Arboretum or on specifically on trees, but then we also want to work with other libraries and, and have access to those resources too. So I feel like we're at one of the best possible times because we have access to maybe some more traditional resources and then some things that are very contemporary. And then we want to make sure that we're pushing them and sharing them into the future. So I feel like it's it's just really an exceptional time for all of us. Yeah, preserving the past, serving the present, preparing for the future. I love that. That that's such a great uh, way to describe specialized libraries and, and kind of the role they play. So, um, okay, Rita, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in for another episode of Specialized Library Spotlight. Uh, it's so great to be able to kind of find out more about the specialized libraries uh, in Illinois and, and specifically with Rails. So, uh, thank you again. Have a great uh, have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.